So let's store some Z values. And there's a function called pretty with values between, I'm going to just put negative five up to five. Between those two limits, we'll have 100, I would say equally spaced values. And for the height, the Y axis, uh, let's say HT, density distribution function, those Z values that we generated earlier. So this will calculate the height that we can then plot. Plot Z on the X axis and HT on the Y axis. And it's going to look like a normal distribution. You can change the type of those dots using type which says P for points, so that's the default. L for lines, you, if you want a line, I would say use L. So within quotes, L. So this is a normal distribution. P norm, so this is density distribution function, quantile function and generation for random and so on with mean zero, sigma one. So if you want probability to the left of negative two, this point here to the left of negative two, obviously that area is quite less. So it's about 2%. When we use normal distributions, we do two types of calculation. One is given the distribution, we try to find area to the left, to the right, or in between. And second type of inverse calculation is given the area, we try to find the Z value. That we do using Q norm. What it gives is if I say 0 0.95, 0 0.95 means what point on this z axis will give me area to the left of 95 percent so this 0.95 is area to the left obviously z cannot be negative area to the left of zero is 50 percent if it is negative then it is going to be less than 50 percent so 95 percent means it has to be a positive value so if you run this you get 1.64 so this means probability that z is less than negative two so this is what we are finding and this means probability that z is less than question mark is equal to 0 0.95 so we're trying to figure out what that question mark will be that will give an area to the left of 0.95 if you have data where mean and standard deviation is given then let's say if you want to find q or 0.95 where mean is actually two and uh, sigma is 0 0.5, let's say 0 0.5. So we are talking about a normal distribution with mean two and sigma 0 0.5. So under that situation, what value of uh, X, now it's not Z, but what value of X will give me 95% area. So if you run that, the value of X variable is 2.8. So Z is reserved for standard normal variable, which has mean zero and sigma one. And X could be any variable. We can store 50 and some values between negative five and positive five, only 100. And for height, we'll use D for distribution and then T. And we have defined T earlier, but for using T distribution, we need also degrees of freedoms. And then we can do the same thing plot this, Z becomes T. So you can see the tails are slightly thicker. If you go back compared to this, see clearly thicker tails. For T distribution, if you want probabilities, let's say to the left of negative two, three degrees of freedom, it is about 6.9%. Given the probability of 0.95, with three degrees of freedom, if you are trying to figure out what should be the T value B will be about 2.3. If you start with R, R for random and norm, if you want to generate 10 random numbers from standard normal distribution, this is what it is going to generate. Typically between negative three and positive three. If you want to make a normal probability plot, it's called QQ norm. So this is the normal QQ plot but for that we'll have to store these numbers somewhere so let's store this in x and if we plot these 10 values it is going to look like this you can also type qq line x so it will add a straight line it becomes like easier to see if the data points are closer to the straight line or not for example if i run this again just notice what happens to the data points it changes 
earlier it was like this and obviously for you it may be even different and next time it becomes like this 